Hello, everyone, and welcome into another edition of the GSMC College Football Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. I'm your host, as always, Tommy Brzee. It is Wednesday, October 16th, and we have a great show for you today. we got to start getting into Week 8 because we got a ton of games to get to over the next couple of days. But we'll start with Alabama-Tennessee, one of the more confusing games of the weekend because two weeks ago I would have said it's two title contenders. Now I'm very confused about where they stand in college football, but I'll break that game down in the first one. Then we'll get into the uh, SEC breakdowns. A couple of big-time games, LSU at Arkansas, Auburn heading up to Missouri. A couple of games that are a little bit more under the radar, but could have a ton to do with what the SEC looks like down the road. Then we'll move over to the Big 12. We'll get to Colorado at Arizona, a huge one for Colorado to get back on track. And then we'll get to Kansas State, West Virginia, one where Kansas State badly needs to win to keep in that Big 12 race. We'll get into the top 10 teams. What do we need to see from them this upcoming weekend? whether it's nitty-gritty or just kind of general sense. What do we need to see from them in some big-time matchups in the top 10 this upcoming weekend? And then we'll just get some questions out of the way. We'll get some Wednesday questions, all the things that we just kind of wondering going into the week. One of the biggest ones for me is, are we leaving this week with some answers or more questions about college football? Because it could go any which way. But before we jump in here, I do want to remind you all we get tons of questions and comments throughout the show. And the best way for you all to get your question on the screen, we can have fun back and forth here, is to use that Super Chat feature at the bottom of the chat on the sports network page there's a little dollar sign click on that add any question comment you like it'll pop up on the screen and we can have a fun back and forth here definitely want this to be interactive we're in the meat of the season so i want you guys to be able to ask any question you like and we can incorporate it into the show but let's go ahead and jump in here because this one's going to be fun no two ways about that whenever you get the third uh, saturday in october you have some fun <laughs> and we saw it two years ago at in tennessee when it was one of the best games Tennessee's played in quite some time. It was a huge, huge game for that program. Showed you that they were kind of finding their way back up to the top. Obviously, last year was a little bit of a lull, but feels like they're right back there. Have a great defense, an incredible team, one of the best running backs in the entire country in Dylan Sampson, and a quarterback in Nico Imaliava, that very talented player, is not quite hitting the mark as of late. So definitely something to watch as we head into this game. But the reality is, two weeks ago, if this game was to happen, you're saying these are two title contenders. They're feeling great about where they are. Alabama coming off a win over Georgia. Tennessee off a win over Oklahoma. You're thinking, okay, this is going to be a huge game. Whoever wins this one has every chance to win a title. Now you go in trying to wonder who these teams are in general. I'm very, very confused about where they stand in the college football world, but Alabama was able to eke out a win against South Carolina last week. Kane Womack did a much better job in that game, uh, just kind of holding everything in, although there were some big plays downfield that I don't know if they were Kane Womack's fault because I don't know the play call. I'm not necessarily someone to go after play calling too aggressively here, but Tennessee is in a spot where they have issues that are both simple and complicated because the reality is the offense is just disjointed. Now, there's been some narrow misses on execution that are costing them big-time plays downfield. Nico is missing those passes from time to time. Some uh, receivers are not giving him the help that he probably needs on those deep balls from time to time. So there are a couple of different things here, and it's one of those things that you can probably pinpoint the issue pretty quickly with Tennessee. How quickly you can fix it is going to be a different question. And then Last week, we talked about the LSU Ole Miss game. It's kind of a pseudo-elimination game in this 12-team playoff. If you're in the SEC and you have two losses before anywhere, before like week 8, week 9, week 10 even, you're probably in pretty bad shape going forward if you want to be in the CFP. Both these teams, or whoever loses this game, would have that after this game, and they have a lot of games coming forward that I don't think they're going to be able to go on skate the rest of the way. So whoever wins this one is in very good shape. Whoever loses this one... I would venture to say is probably out of the CFP race. So a huge one in Knoxville on Saturday, and that fan base is going to be on absolute fire. I can promise you that. But the biggest question for me is, was Milrow's performance last week a blip, or is it the inconsistencies that we saw last year? Are they here to stay? Is that just a part of his game, and he was just playing really good football the first couple of weeks? Definitely something you're going to want to figure out, and he's going to have to play really, really good football in this game, especially with his legs, which we'll get to here in a minute. But one of the big-time matchups to watch, and there's plenty all across the field, to be totally honest with you, but the one that I think might decide it is the Tennessee O-line against the Bama D-line. The Tennessee O-line did not play well against Florida. They missed a lot of uh, run, or they weren't great at uh, pulling on runs. They didn't necessarily do a great job. Lance Hurd kind of got eaten for dinner in that game. You got to be able to block better against a group that is plenty athletic coming off the edge. So we'll talk about them here in a second. But in 2022, we walked into this game, number five, Alabama, number six, Tennessee, 
the line was at Bama minus eight and a half. And the reality of that was just, it's Alabama, it's Tennessee. They always beat Tennessee. That's not a question. They had beaten them 16 years before that. Well, this one's a little bit different. It's Alabama still favored on the road at Tennessee, but it's much closer. This is a game that, frankly, I would call a coin flip, if I'm being totally honest with you. So it's going to be incredible, going to be a little bit of a dogfight, but let's get to some players to watch in this one because I think Alabama's going to need Jeremy Bernard in this game. I think everyone knows what Ryan Williams is, and last week was a little bit of a step back in production for Ryan Williams, and Jeremy Bernard picked up the slack in a lot of different ways. He's going to need to do that again this week because I know that Tennessee has some holes in that back end. I think the way you open them up is with someone like Jeremy Bernard, you know, running those drags, running those deep crosses that pull some people inside, and then you can hit the deep shots to uh, Jer- uh, to Ryan Williams and all the other receivers out there. I believe they're going to be missing Kendrick Law in this game. I could be off on that. I think Kobe Prentice is up in the air, so plenty of people that need to step up. Emmanuel Henderson, another one to watch outside on for y, uh, for Alabama in this one. Keon Saab on the back end of that defense is massive because you know what Tennessee likes to do. You know they like to throw in the middle of the field. That's where their money is made, and although Nico has missed a couple of those balls, Keon Saab is incredible. He has a great, great nose for the ball, has great ball skills when it's in the air, and if he can make a couple of plays in this game and get that Alabama defense off the field, because I believe right now they're facing the most plays of anyone in the entire country on the defensive side of the ball, you got to get off the field one way or another, whether it's picks, whether it's stopping them on third down, which is going to be huge in this game. So definitely a lot to watch there. And then for Tennessee, you need Deshaun Bishop in this game. You know, Dylan Sampson, in my opinion, is one of the very best, probably top five running back in the country right about now, doing incredible thing, uh, uh, doing incredible things behind not elite blocking by any means. So Deshaun Bishop's got to be a guy that gets a couple of carries. He doesn't need to take over this game. He doesn't need to be the big player in in any way. What he does need to do is give Dylan Sampson just a little bit of a breather here and there, let him open up a, a couple of holes, and then Dylan Sampson can make those big plays that he's more than capable of making. And then on the back end of that Tennessee defense, Jermar McCoy is a fantastic corner for Tennessee, and he's probably going to have his hands full with Ryan Williams. I don't know if he's going to be traveling with him. It totally depends on the scheme. Usually they don't. Usually it's more about who plays boundary corner, who plays field corner, and that's about it. Unless you have an absolute freak, I bet Travis Hunter gets a little bit of that uh, treatment over there at Colorado. But at the end of the day, I do think there's a player that he's going to get Ryan Williams a lot. He's going to get Jeremy Bernard a lot. He's going to have to play really well in the run game when they get on the outside with Jayla Milrow. There's a lot that he's going to have to be able to execute on Saturday. And if he gets taken advantage of a couple of times downfield, that could be the total difference in this game. So they got to be able to tighten up on that back end. And a couple other keys for Tennessee to be able to win this game, you have to get the ball out on the edge uh, quickly. Because the thing about Tennessee the last couple of weeks has been Nico's just been thinking too much. And a lot of things play into that. The offensive line's not quite playing uh, well enough. They're moving him off a spot. But then when he has a clean pocket, he's moving out of that as well because he feels like it's going to collapse at some point because it has early on in that game. So the reality is you have to make him feel comfortable. The best way to do that is just kind of take the choice out of his hands, whether it's RPOs that he's comfortable with, screens, quick reads, anything that you can do to get the ball out of his hands, get get it in the playmaker's hands, and then maybe you can make some plays and then you open up the deep shots. You pull a couple of safeties in, and then hopefully you can hit some of those deep shots over the top that you've struggled to thus far. But you have to get this kid into a rhythm. Whatever makes sense, most sense for him is absolutely the way you should go about business. And Florida was just not scared of them. They were not scared of that deep ball, and they didn't have a reason to be scared because Tennessee missed a ton of them in that game. So tons of stack boxes, a lot of man coverage. If they can do that, if Alabama can execute that, which has been a big time question for them, then it's going to be a really long day for Tennessee. I can promise you that. And then you got to let D- Dylan Sampson lead the way. This is not going to be even a question in my mind. That's this is what will be uh, be happening on Saturday because if you put a lot on Nico's shoulders in this game. I feel pretty confident that he's not going to be able to execute to the degree that he needs to. I think he's a very talented kid. I just think when you're walking into this particular game, there's going to be a lot going through his head. You're going to have to get that run game going. Now, the problem with that is Samson had 112 yards last week against Florida. Absolutely incredible. 95 of them were after contact. That cannot be the case this upcoming weekend. You have to be able to give him some room, and you have to be able to get him running downhill because if you can do that, He could probably get over 200 yards and totally take over this game. But if you keep uh, having him hit behind the line of scrimmage, one yard past the line of scrimmage, 
it could be a long day and you're not quite getting the results that you wanted to. And then finally, give Nico some six and seven minute protections. He's going to need time and he's going to need ability to sit there and say, I am in a clean pocket. I don't need to leave. I don't need to bail a little bit earlier because a lot of it feels uncomfortable. Give him clean pockets early on in the game. And then I think you can go back to normal blocking schemes. You can go back to six, even five man protections and he'll stand in a little bit better. I just think those early uh, downs, you have to make sure that he's giving clean pockets, have to make sure that he feels comfortable where he is, because then I think later in the game, he won't bail from those great situations, be able to make that big time throw that could totally change this game. So a lot on the table for Tennessee and a lot of things that they have to fix up, but a couple of things that can be fixed up if you can just execute those really minor things that they've been missing the last couple of weeks. As for Alabama, you got to get Jalen Milrow running the ball, and for a number of different reasons. Probably the biggest one is your running backs haven't been doing a whole lot. You have not been able to get a running game going really much at all with uh, the running backs. I think they're very talented running backs, but if your offensive line can't run block all that well, it's not going to be a great day. So you got to get Jalen Milrow out on the edge. Now, last week he only had 36 yards on 18 carries. The year before when he played Tennessee, was not a day where he got out and ran too often. He had, I believe, a 15-yard run, but that was about it in that game. So you got to be very careful with this kid, but if Jalen Milrow is not a factor with his legs in this game and he has to stand in the pocket and make all those throws, it's going to be tough, and he's going to find himself on his backside quite a few times in this game. And then commit to stop the run. I know that sounds a little bit crazy when you're playing Tennessee because they have so much explosive potential, but as of right now, they're just not heating deep balls, and I would dare them to hit one. I would say, you know, we're going to stop the run. We're going to do everything we can to bottle in Dylan Sampson, and then if you can hit him, more than welcome. You're more than, uh, you can absolutely hit him, but there have been holes in this Alabama back end. Doesn't necessarily matter if you can't hit that guy going downfield, and Nico just hasn't been able to the last couple of weeks. Now, here's the thing about Tennessee offense. It can flip in a second. They can get things going. They can score 40 points in this game and make me look uh, really dumb. But at the end of the day, I think committing to the run, making sure that Dylan Sampson doesn't beat you, and then you'll live with what Nico Iamaliava does. You know, if he makes those big time plays, if he rises to the moment, then so be it. But I tend to believe he's going to miss a lot more than he's going to hit. But and the other part of this is unleash the pa- unleash the pass rush. This offensive line for Tennessee is very attackable. You can go after them pretty much every single time you're on the field. Florida got eight pressures, three sacks, and caused plenty of issues in that game just by virtue of getting home early. Nico got a little bit nervous late. So Qua Rousseau, Quay Robinson, going to be incredible players, huge players in this game. Two guys that, frankly, if you're going to get Nico all over the place, if you're going to get his confidence as low as it feels like it is right now, you're going to have to get after him early. Then he's going to start making those mistakes because that's just been the formula the last couple of weeks. So it's going to be a battle. These are two really, really interesting teams that badly need this win, maybe more than just about anyone this upcoming weekend. But I'm going to take Alabama, and I'm going to take him for a very, very simple uh, purpose. I trust Jalen Milrow to make the plays down the stretch in this atmosphere more than I do Nico. And that's not an indictment on Nico. I frankly think once we get over to 2025, he's going to be one of the very best players in the entire country. As of right now, I just don't think he's there to play in this game uh, when with all of the things on the table. I just think he's going to make a couple of mistakes, and I'm feeling very, very wary about this pick, but I am going to lean Alabama in this one. Going to be a really tough fight, and whoever comes out of it, feeling pretty good about where they sit in the SEC. Whoever loses is asking a lot of questions on Monday, so going to be an incredible matchup, one that if you make any pick confidently, I call you a little bit crazy, but at the end of the day, going to be an incredible matchup in uh, Knoxville, and it's going to be one that's going to define those seasons and programs in a a ton of different ways going forward but let's take our first break here and when we come back we got a couple of other sec games to get to lsu heads up to arkansas for a possible upset alert and then auburn at uh, or auburn at missouri is going to be a huge huge game that could trip up missouri going forward we'll break it down right after this so stick with us 